I'm ready to go. All right, Rick. With Bob Davey here at Ruidoso. Uh, Coach, could you kind of take us through the process at which you and Paul and, and everybody involved arrived at the decision to reinstate uh, Crusoe and Saquon? Yeah, and, and it was my decision. Um, you know, back in April, um, I suspended those two from the team because it was a criminal case and they were charged criminally. And the reason I'm reinstating the team to the team is because yesterday I received word from both attorneys that the criminal case had been dismissed and it's closed. So um, the reason I dismissed them from the team was because of the criminal case. And once that criminal case was closed, I saw no reason not to reinstate them to the team. Uh, my understanding is there is an ongoing investigation by UNM. Uh, is that a concern for you at all? Well, certainly it's, it's a concern, um, obviously, to myself and to the players. But, um, you know, and, and honestly, I weighed that as well. But um, that UNM investigation has been ongoing. And those players were in school on scholarship all through the summer. Um, um, they weren't suspended from the university for that investigation ongoing. So I didn't see any reason why they should be suspended from the football team just because there's an ongoing uh, university investigation. So, you know, everyone's been touched by this. Everyone's been touched. Uh, we all know the significance of this. Um, I know my responsibility. Uh, I, I don't have any agenda in this other than trying to do what I think's right and what I think's fair. And, um, you know, again, I, I, I'm comfortable with it. But, but I don't minimize the impact this has had on a lot of people. Um, given the findings of the DA's office, but uh, just considering uh, Crusoe's and Saquon's personal conduct uh, back in April, are you, are, you, is there, are you satisfied with with them and with that? Yeah, I think that's a great question, you know, because, you know, to be a part of a football team, particularly our football team, is not someone's right. That's a privilege. Uh, but I would add to that as well, I wasn't there that night. No one else was there. Um, I deferred to the experts. And they were charged criminally. Uh, from everything I understand from the attorneys, this was a thorough, thorough investigation. So I wasn't there. Um, um, I'm not in a position to say um, that they did act below the line as far as what I expect out of our football team. So. Um, you know, I'm comfortable with this. You know, obviously I've laid awake a lot of nights. Uh, you know, I've talked about that before. I mean, this is a, has affected me as much as anything I've been affected by in coaching. And, and, I, and I take this very seriously. And uh, believe me, I, I, I've rolled around a lot at night. I've, I've talked to my wife a lot at night about it. And, uh, you know, I, I'm comfortable with this decision right now. I think this is the right thing to do. And, um, you know, I, I feel pretty good about it. How is it, you said it's affected you, how's it affected the team? What's the atmosphere been like without them there and then today with them there? Yeah, you know, I, I talk about all the time that, um, you know, when you're a little kid, sometimes when people tell you about circumstances or events, you should stay away from them. You know, sometimes you have to, the little kid has to go touch the stove sometimes, even though you tell them and tell them and tell them to stay out of certain situations. Um, you know, hopefully this can be a tremendous learning experience for our players. Um, you know, th th this issue is all across campuses. Uh, you know, it's all across this country. And it's, it's um, you know, it's something that, um, you know, I think has touched us directly, each and every one of us. So I, I think, you know, no one wins. No one wins in any of this. But if there's any bright spot it's maybe it can be learned it can be a tremendous example not only to our football team uh, but young people on our campus at UNM uh, and, and young people in general people in general you know some situations are toxic and some situations you are much better off to just simply avoid what about distraction I mean obviously media is here wanting to know more about this is it a distraction from the upcoming season or the training camp no I don't think at all quite honestly these players, uh, they're much more resilient sometimes than us old coaches are. So I've tried to take on the burden of that, quite honestly. Um, keep that from our players other than every day. 
every single day talking about our expectations, uh, talking about how to handle situations, how to respond above the line to events that happen. Uh, but but I, I really don't think it, it, it's, it's, it's been a distraction, nor do I, I think it's a distraction going forward. Uh, given that they're veterans, uh, they, they didn't practice today, just did some conditioning. Uh, given that uh, veterans and know a lot of uh, the offense and defense already, do you expect them back sooner than later? You know, first of all, Rick, there's that five-day acclimation period that they go through, just like our, our football team went through when we first reported. So it's two days in helmets and shorts. It's two days in shoulder pads and helmets, and then it's one day in full pads. And then you can be in full-speed contact. Uh, you know, obviously, um, we don't have many older guys on this football team. And Caruso and Saquon are what I consider older guys. Um, you know, they've had a lot of reps. They've had a lot of repetitions. I think both of them realize that they have a lot of competition as well. They have a lot of competition at the running back position and at the defensive back position. So nothing's going to be given. Nothing's going to be given. Um, but, um, you know, the best guy will play. Um, I won't hold this against them. Uh, nor will I give them any favors because they've missed time from a case that has been criminally dismissed. Um, so it's going to be what it's going to be. You know, the, the best guys will play. Will we see them play the first game versus UTEP? Well, that's up to them. You know, if, if, they're, if, they're, if they win back their positions, um, if they're able to contribute in that first game, um, as standing here right now, I, there's no reason that they wouldn't. Obviously, it's no secret that there's a, you know, a university investigation continuing. But, you know, I don't have a crystal ball. You know, I can't look in the future and guarantee what's going to happen and what's not going to happen. But, you know, standing here right now, you know, it, they're, they're back in good graces on our football team and they're reinstated. What about punishment? Is there any extra? I mean, obviously, you know, today you said they were just out there conditioning because they can't wear their pads. Is there any extra punishment? I mean, running lines or anything? No. I, I, again, um, you know, they were suspended because it was a criminal case, and the criminal case was dismissed. Um, none of us were there. None of us were there the night that this happened. Uh, the experts have looked at this very, very thoroughly. Um, that's why they're experts. So I go on their findings, and I see no reason uh, to penalize those players any farther. You know, I'm not the judge, and I'm not the jury in this case. I'm just dealing with what came out yesterday, and the case is dismissed and it's closed. So they're moving forward. So in four days, we can see them full pads practicing with the team. Yeah, they actually practiced today, but because of their situation with this acclimation period, uh, they were just in.